Our world lead now, the State Department confirming to CNN that two U.S. citizens are among those who have been arrested and detained by Saudi authorities after a crackdown on the kingdom's critics on Thursday. This seems to be the first massive roundup of Saudi dissidents since right after the murder of Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi. But as CNN's Michelle Kaczynski reports, Saudi Arabia is hardly the only autocratic regime to detain Americans since President Trump took office. If you thought the brutal murder of Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi by Saudi officials would keep the crown prince on his best behavior for a while, it didn't last long. Now, the kingdom has rounded up a group of activists, including two American citizens, journalist Salah al Haida, physician Badr al-Ibrahim, seven people in total, according to CNN sources, under arrest, all writers and bloggers interested in social reforms and women's rights in this latest Saudi crackdown. Don't give up, don't despair. We will not. Just this week, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo spoke to family members of American hostages, like journalist Austin Tice in Syria, and those who've lost loved ones, like Otto Warmbier in North Korea. I want you all to know I'm not here today to instill in you any false hope. Uh, uh, sometimes our best simply is not enough. The Trump administration has made some energetic efforts to bring Americans home, more than a dozen in the last two years, and some tough cases, finally freed from North Korea, Venezuela, Egypt, the Coleman family from Pakistan, Pastor Brunson from Turkey. The president clearly revels in these successes, yet still many nations remain undeterred to arrest more Americans, both friends and foes, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Russia, China, Iran. Not long after Trump publicly said the arrest of a Chinese telecoms executive on U.S. charges might help in trade talks with China, as if this was politically motivated, CNN learned there are now multiple American residents believed held in China's vast internment camps. Because Trump is showing disdain and disrespect for the rule of law, that there's not going to be any repercussions if they do the same. Some analysts say the administration has been inconsistent. The administration, while doing well in some areas, has not done well in others and therefore has a, a, a mixed reputation. For example, not yet opening a hostage-only communications channel with Iran. A former administration official says the U.S. has been insisting that the at least five Americans held there need to be released before there can be discussion of anything else, a stance some experts feel won't work. And Trump's refusals to hold North Korea's Kim Jong-un responsible for Otto Warmbier's death. He tells me that he didn't know about it, and I will take him at his word. Or the Saudi crown prince for the murder of Jamal Khashoggi send the message that some things, no matter how brutal, can be explained away for those at the top. The Saudis aren't commenting on the Americans held there, but as for Americans detained around the world, it's tough to know exactly how many there are. Some aren't made public, some are released after a short amount of time, but experts on this subject tell us the best estimates they go by are that currently about 3,000 Americans are held globally and about 100 of those are considered hostages. Jake. All right, Michelle Kaczynski at the State Department for us. Thank you so much.